Hello everyone, welcome to lecture 6 of the online course on nanophotonics, plasmonics and metamaterials. So today's lecture will be on uh, electromagnetic waves in dielectric media. So here is the outline of the lecture. We will have a quick uh, recap of the wave equation. Then we will introduce the concept of wave vector k. We will look into plane waves in dielectric medium, discuss about the concept of wave front, then constraints due to Maxwell's equations, energy flow, angular frequency, phase velocity, group velocity, dispersion and finally we will look into plane waves in lossy dielectric media. So from the last lecture, you must remember that we have discussed how to derive wave equation from Maxwell's equation. So for your quick reference, we have again uh, reproduced the four Maxwell's equations here, which can be, you know, tabulated in as differential equations and curl equations. Now from the curl equation, we have seen that if we take the curl of curl of this vector, we can introduce curl of B. B you can write as mu h. So curl of h can be replaced by this term and finally we come up to this vector wave equation. That is del square e equals mu epsilon dot square e dot e square. So it's a second order partial derivative and this is the vector wave equation. Now this can also be written in this form like instead of writing e vector using bold face one can actually write it as this kind of notation that is also fine and you can explicitly write that this vector e is a function of position r that's a vector r vector and time t and when you take both the terms on left hand side you will get this minus so this is basically the governing equation of the electric field and this equation is nothing but your wave equation so you can actually have a look at the electromagnetic wave here which is propagating along x direction and you see that the b field that is the magnetic field is oscillating along z and the electric field is oscillating along y direction and this particular parameter that is nabla square or del square parameter is called laplacian parameter right so if you consider Cartesian or rectangular coordinate system, you can write del square as dou square dou x square plus dou square dou y square plus dou square dou z square. So these are all known factors. I'm just uh, quickly giving you an overview. Now let us see that uh, how to write wave equation in frequency domain. Now if you assume a time harmonic wave propagating along x direction as was shown here, then to obtain the frequency domain wave equation, you have to do Fourier transform, right? So we can use Fourier transform with e to the power i omega t time dependence. So there should be a t here. So you can write e x of t because here we assume that the propagation is along x direction. So it is e x e to the power i omega t and this form is also known as phasor form. So we have introduced one new term here which is omega that is nothing but the angular frequency. Now if we take derivative of e to the power i omega t with respect to time, so you can assume t here, you will get i omega e to the power minus i omega t. That means using this you can easily convert the time domain wave equation into frequency domain wave equation by replacing dot dot t with i omega and you can replace dot square dot t e square using i omega whole square which comes out to be minus omega square okay so the wave equation can therefore be given as so you can start with this one this is your wave equation okay and you can finally write that instead of dot square dot t e square you can write i omega whole square okay and that will actually give you i square will give you minus 1 that minus minus gives you plus so what do you have you have actually mu epsilon omega square so if you take you know velocity of wave v as 1 over square root of mu epsilon you can write this term as omega over 
v whole square okay and these terms remain as it is so you have actually everything in frequency domain now so you are able to get this kind of equation so you see that there is a dependence of omega over v and this particular term we, we can introduce a new term here that is called wave number or k so k can be written as omega over v or it can be if you write omega as 2 pi f where f is the linear frequency you can write k equals 2 pi f by v v is the velocity of the wave so this equation in the form of wave vector or wave number this is wave number so you can also call this equation as Helmholtz equation or Helmholtz wave, wave equation so this is for a particular case where the wave is propagating along uh, x direction so you can also consider um, a generic form of this equation and you can write del square e plus k square e equals 0 so that will be Helmholtz equation in generic form so we understood wave equation and then from there we know how to go into the frequency domain and we can obtain the Helmholtz equation now let's look into this wave vector concept in more details so L all of the can components in general are basically functions of four coordinates so there are basically three um, spatial components x y and z these are the spatial coordinates and there is also time so if you actually consider electric field it is a function of position as I told you before and time so you can write this as e equals cos kx x plus kyy plus kzz minus omega t this could be a solution to the wave equation now here kx ky and kz are nothing but the x y and z components of the wave vector k okay omega is the angular frequency so when you put this form into this particular equation you will see that you turn up getting kx square plus ky square plus kz square equals omega square mu epsilon so omega square mu epsilon you can this part you can write again as k square so what do you get here you actually get to see the same uh, equality that we have seen before so you can write omega square root of mu epsilon equal k so 1 by square root of mu epsilon is nothing but v so that way you can find omega by v is basically k it's the same thing so the, this wave vector k is also known as propagation vector because it tells you the direction of wave propagation so you can actually write this vector k as as i mentioned uh, kx along x cap ky along y cap and kz along z cap so these are the different components along the three unit vectors now so we have seen the derivation here that uh, from wave vector or the propagation vector how we can find out the relationship between omega and k so if you consider free space then these values epsilon sorry uh, mu and epsilon they will be mu naught and epsilon naught that is the permeability and permittivity of the free space so you can simply write that omega square is basically k square or if you think about the amplitude only so you can take modulus of k whole square that will be di divided by this two terms so this two comes in the denominator so for free space they are mu naught and epsilon naught okay and 1 over square root of mu naught epsilon naught is nothing but c so when you take square root on both sides you get omega modulus of k times c okay so this relationship is also called the dispersion relation so omega k relationship is known as dispersion relation so this tells you the uh, relationship between the wave vector or modulus of wave vector is nothing but the wave number okay wave number and the angular frequency 
so here the value is also shown the magnitude of the wave vector that is when you take the modulus of this k vector you can write it as simple k okay and that is nothing but 2 pi over lambda what is lambda lambda is the wavelength of light here in this case we are considering everything in vacuum so here it will be wavelength of light in vacuum if you consider any media it will be the wavelength of light in that particular media now let us see how plane waves propagate in dielectric media okay so the direction of propagation is actually given by the scalar product of the wave vector k and the position vector r so that also so this one basically tells you the direction of propagation so when you compute k dot r you get k x x r is the position vector that can be written as you know x x cap plus y y cap plus z z cap so when you do this dot product you will get k x x plus k y y plus k z z so that actually gives you a phase front because k dot r is a constant so here also you can see k dot r okay in both cases you will see that k dot r actually coming along this direction okay or you can say these are the uh, constant phase fronts so phase front is basically nothing but a plane and the amplitude of the electric field on this plane is a constant so we can assume the electric field ERT to have this particular form in this case so that was the solution of our wave equation also so ERT can be written as E then cos of uh, kxx kyy plus kzz minus omega t. So when all the amplitude are equal we can consider it as a uniform plane wave. Okay. So first of all when the phase front is a plane okay, that's a plane wave okay. and when the uniform amplitude is there along all the points on this phase front we call it as a uniform plane wave okay so here is the definition so uniform plane waves are nothing but waves with constant phase fronts okay so the phase fronts they are basically planar and the amplitude e0 is also uniform across this plane and what is this uh, wave front that is nothing but a surface over which the phase of the wave is constant at a given instant okay and that is referred to as wave front so a wave front of a plane wave is obviously a infinite plane that is perpendicular to the direction of propagation and there is also the other case possible that when the plane wave is non-uniform it means its phase front is still a plane because it's a plane wave but the amplitude of the field are not constant okay now since the constant phase front must be perpendicular to the wave vector k all the times so we can um, conclude that the phase front also propagates in the same direction as your wave okay so phase front has to travel in the same direction of your k and at every point on a given plane okay is equivalent so you can also say like as far as E and B are concerned, all these points are actually same. So the question comes, how do these wave fronts move as time goes on? So the answer is, these wave fronts must be always perpendicular to the wave vector K. So they will actually have to move in the same direction of K. Okay, I hope that is clear. So now let us see that what are the constraints to this plane wave being put by the Maxwell's equation because Maxwell's equation tells you about the coupled electric and magnetic fields so depending on uh, the relationship there may be some constraints put on the plane waves so that will be seen here so now let's see how Maxwell's equation can further constrain the form of the waves so let's look into the Maxwell's first equation for a source free region okay so here is the Maxwell's first equation when there is no source that is rho is 0 charge density surface charge density is 0 so you can simply write del dot E equals 0 now del dot E can be written as dou E x 
ओके डॉ ई एक्स डी एक्स डॉ ई वाई डी वाई प्लस डॉ ई जेड डी जेड ओके एंड दिस यू नो पार्शियल डेरिवेटिव विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू स्पेस कैन बी कन्वर्टेड इन टू यू नो आई के एक्स दैट इज हाउ यू टेक देयर फोर ईयर्स एंड यू कैन राइट दम इन टर्म्स ऑफ यू नो द वेब फैक्टर्स ओके so this one you can write i k x this one you can write i k y this one you can write i k z so from this equation you can also write that this is now you take i common and because it's zero on the other side so it simply becomes k x e x plus k y e y plus k z e z so this is nothing but the dot product of k vector and e vector so k and e the dot product is zero so when the two you know two vectors have dot product zero it means they are perpendicular to each other it means the electric field is basically perpendicular to the direction of wave propagation and the same thing can also be shown for the second maxwell's equation that k dot b is becoming zero because you will start with del dot b equals zero and you can do the same exercise and you will write the same conclusion that b magnetic field is also you know perpendicular to the wave propagation we are saying b also is magnetic field because b is equal mu h okay so you they they can be actually um b is particularly it is basically um magnetic flux density but this also tells you the direction of the magnetic field okay now here let us see the expression of e in the third maxwell's equation so this is the third maxwell's equation where you have curl of e equals minus dot b dot e now curl can be written as you know this vector del vector can be written as dot ox comma dot y comma dot z you are doing a cross product with e so that actually can be converted into this domain okay so this is nothing but i k x so dot ox is nothing but i k x in the fourier space okay and you obtain this one time derivatives dot dot t can be written as minus i omega okay so once you see this you can write this is nothing but your k vector cross e equals omega b it means the cross product to two vectors is perpendicular to each of them okay and that is happen only when you know b is perpendicular to e so that means these are the conditions that a plane wave have to follow because of the maxwell's condition that electric field will will be perpendicular to the propagation direction magnetic field will be perpendicular to the propagation direction and electric field and magnetic field will also be orthogonal or perpendicular to each other okay so this kind of um, orientation basically form a right handed triplet okay so you can take one this finger along e this is b so this will be showing your uh, k direction wave propagation direction so it means e cross b if you do this particular uh, cross product you will get the same direction as k it means the wave is finally propagating along the k direction now with that we have to understand when a wave is propagating there should be some energy associated with it and which direction the energy is flowing so when electromagnetic wave travels in space it carries energy and the energy density is always associated with the electric field and magnetic field and there is something called pointing vector which is named after after john henry pointing and this particular uh, vector is used in order to demonstrate the energy flux density of an electromagnetic field so pointing vector is nothing but it's a result of the vector product of the fields electric and magnetic component so mathematically you can write it as p equals e cross h now h can be written as b over mu so this is how it looks like e cross b over mu so pointing vector again is a vector which is basically cross product of two vectors so it will be in the direction perpendicular to the plane that is containing e and h and pointing vector is also called instantaneous energy flux density since it represents the rate of energy transfer per unit area 
so it has got a unit of watt per meter square clear so the next attribute to the plane wave is the angular frequency now if we have arbitrarily taken taken a wave that is traveling along say positive x direction then we can write this so e y so you are talking about the electric field component along y direction x is the propagation direction and t is the time dependence so it can be written as e naught cos kx minus omega t so e naught is the amplitude and that that is you know varying as a cosine function okay so if we have chosen its phase so that the maximum field strength occurs at the origin at time t equals 0 so that is why cos function has been taken that we assume that the maximum field strength is happening when t equals 0 okay then at any point of uh, space you can say that the electric field oscillates okay at a angular frequency of omega between plus e and plus e naught and minus e naught let's assume that this maximum amplitude is e naught and this negative on the negative side it is minus e naught so you can say it is uh, you know oscillating between plus e naught to minus e naught and what is the frequency frequency is omega similarly for magnetic field also b field also you can say that it is basically oscillating between plus b naught and minus b naught okay so this is how it has been defined so the amplitude of the wave is maximum value of you know e y x t so we are writing this electric field as e y because this is the direction y direction of the uh, electric field vector x t because they are propagating along x okay and t is the time dependence so the amplitude of the wave been e naught is basically the maximum amplitude of this particular field so we also can define the period of oscillation that is defined as capital t so that is nothing but the time taken for a complete oscillation from here to here and once you know capital time um, capital t that is the period of oscillation you can also find out the frequency f so frequency is nothing but number of complete oscillations okay per unit time so it is basically inverse of this uh, time period t so from that you can also find out what is the angular frequency omega so omega equals 2 pi f and f can be written as 1 over t so omega can be written as 2 pi over t clear so these are the couple of important concepts so we have seen wave vector we have seen the angular frequency now let us look into another important attribute of uh, plane wave which is phase velocity so the wavelength lambda is a distance covered by one complete cycle of the wave right and the wave number k okay is basically the number of wavelengths that can fit into a distance of 2 pi so that is how we have defined uh, this uh, wavelength and wave number so relationship between k and uh, lambda we have seen um, k equals 2 pi upon lambda so the quantities of electromagnetic wave is basically similar to that of a mechanical wave so we know omega equals 2 pi f f is nothing but 1 over t k is 2 pi by lambda and c speed is nothing but f lambda which is also written as omega over k now if you see this particular uh, relationship you can also understand that the velocity of the peak of the wave okay that is the position of the constant phase okay so the velocity requires that omega t minus kx will be constant okay here because the slope is zero okay so you can write the velocity of the propagation is then defined as phase velocity so you can write vp equals dx over dt that is omega from this you can find out it is basically omega by k now omega you can write as 2 pi f and k you can write as 2 pi over lambda so you get vp equals f lambda so that is the phase velocity okay now when an electromagnetic wave is traveling in a dielectric medium 
The oscillating electric field basically polarizes the molecule of that medium at a frequency of the wave. And relative permittivity is basically the measure of the ease with which the medium becomes polarized. And hence, it also indicates the extent of interaction between that medium and the electromagnetic field. Now, if you consider a dielectric medium to have a permittivity of epsilon r and a phase velocity, then you can write the phase velocity Vp will be square root of 1 over epsilon mu. Now, epsilon is nothing but epsilon naught times epsilon r, where epsilon r is the relative permittivity. Okay. And this is how you can write. So, in this case, epsilon r also varies with wavelength. Okay. So, this will be the phase velocity. Okay. So, phase velocity is also giving you one important thing that is the ratio of the speed. So, once you know this particular uh, phase velocity, you can also find out the ratio of the speed of light in free space that is given by c and the speed in a medium that is its phase velocity and this ratio is nothing but the refractive index. So, that is the definition of refractive index. So, n equals c by v or vp, this is the phase velocity. So, you can write square root of epsilon naught, epsilon r mu naught divided by epsilon naught mu naught. So, you can cancel out the terms and you can write it as square root of epsilon r. So, that is how you know in a lossless medium refractive index is same as square root of epsilon r. Now you can also look up think about dispersion in the sense that you know that the concept or the notion of phase velocity is defined for plane waves at fixed frequency. Now if the medium is dispersive that means uh, in dielectrics it permittivity can be dependent on the frequency. In that case you know the phase velocity is basically different for waves with different frequency. So, if that is the case, how do we deal with it? Because a different frequency will have a different uh, phase velocity, right? So, when we deal with propagation of packets of plane wave, that means we are di discussing about finite duration pulses, okay? And when you convert it into Fourier spectra of plane waves, you will see that there are different frequency components present. So, we need the concept of groove velocity. To measure what will be the average speed you can say of that particular package or the pulse. So, the term dispersion refers to the fact that the waves of different frequency travel at different uh, phase velocities and so the phase velocity Vp and the group velocity Vg okay they will not be identical and it happens whenever the dispersion relationship between omega and k becomes non-linear okay. So, if the relationship is linear, then phase velocity will be same as group velocity. Something like if you take free space, the dispersion relation is omega equals ck. So, if you take, you know, vp that is omega by k or you take uh, group velocity that is dou omega by dou k, they will give you the same value c, okay. So, in that case, they are same. But then if, if the medium has got a non-linear dispersion relationship, you will get the two velocities to be different. So, if the group velocity is less than phase velocity, that is basically a normal dispersion and if it is other way, like group velocity is more than the phase velocity, you can call it that uh, anomalous uh, dispersion. So, let us look into the concept of group velocity in little bit more details. So, let us assume in this case that there is a plane wave traveling in z direction, plus z direction, okay. And since there is no perfect monochromatic wave in reality, we have to consider that you know that a group of waves uh, differing slightly in wavelength is actually traveling. So, it is not exactly one particular wavelength, there will be a little bit you know spread in the wavelength and they are all traveling in the same direction. So, you can actually think of in terms of frequency and say that you know uh, two perfectly harmonic waves with slightly different frequency, one to have omega minus delta omega, another can have uh, frequency of omega plus delta omega. They actually propagate together and they interfere and generate a periodic wave packet which contains an oscillating field at the mean frequency mu, something like this. So, they actually create a wave packet 
where the field inside is basically oscillating at a frequency of omega okay and what we are interested because it's a group or a packet we are interested at what speed this packet itself is traveling and for this packet uh, to determine this velocity you must focus on the you know maximum electric field here so let us look into this again so if you consider two sinusoidal waves of frequencies uh, will propagate with propagation constant k minus delta k and k plus delta k inside a material so that the sum will add up like this so you'll have uh, e x at t can be written as e naught cos omega minus delta omega t minus k minus delta k z this is one wave the other wave is e naught cos of omega plus delta omega t minus k plus delta omega delta k z so these are the two waves that we have seen here and when you do the interference or you add them up together you can use the trigonometric identity cos a plus cos b and you can write it in terms of this so you can finally see that you get 2 e naught cos delta omega t minus delta k z so that will be one uh, oscillation and the other one is cos omega t minus k z so you will see that the sinusoidal wave of frequency omega hmm, is amplitude modulated here okay by a slowly varying sinusoid which has got a frequency of delta omega okay and the system of waves this one they will travel along the z direction which is determined by the speed of by the modulating term so here the modulating term is nothing but cos delta omega t minus delta k z so in this case the maximum in the field will occur so this is the maximum so maximum in the field will occur when delta omega t minus delta k z will be constant uh, that is basically 2 pi m what is m m is integer okay in that case you can find out what is the velocity so delta z by delta t if dot do, z by dot t if you do you will come up with dou omega by dou k so this is the definition of the group velocity so vg group velocity should be written as dou omega by dou k so this is kind of a derivation of how to we come to this particular relationship of you know, the group velocity now the group velocity represents the speed with which the energy of the information is propagating since it defines the speed of the envelope of the amplitude variation the maximum electric field in the figure advances that is Emax that advances with a velocity of Vg and where, whereas the phase variation in the electric field so these are the phase variation in the electric field they actually propagate with a phase velocity of Vp so once again the amplitude the maximum amplitude that is the electric field amplitude that propagates with Vg that propagates through this envelope and the phase variations they do this fast oscillation and they have this uh, phase velocity of vp okay so in vacuum we know the dispersion relation is is omega equals ck so in vacuum the group velocity is also d omega by dk if you do you will get c that is same as phase velocity so as i mentioned in vacuum or air group velocity is same as phase velocity so this we have already seen that the maximum electric field in that figure advances with the group velocity of vg whereas the phase variations in the electric field that propagated with phase velocity of vp now for an electromagnetic wave in a medium k is the propagation constant inside the medium so it can be written as k equals 2 pi n over lambda naught what is n and is the refractive index of that medium and lambda naught is the free space wavelength there is a typo here is space okay so the group velocity then is not necessarily the same as the phase velocity vp omega by k and is given by c by n okay so the group velocity definition vg equals dou omega by dou k depends on how the propagation changes in the medium dk or dou k okay that is how the propagation constant changes in the medium with the change in the frequency that is dou omega that is why this ratio is important for finding out uh, 
the phase velocity and it is not necessarily same as omega over k when the refractive index has a wavelength dependence so if you get refract n is different for different different wavelength so there are material which are dispersive in nature that means that the refractive index is not same throughout at different wavelengths they have a slightly different refractive index for those kind of material also group velocity and phase velocity will not remain same okay so that brings a new concept here that is called group index so if you consider the refractive index of the dielectric medium n is basically a function of the wavelength so n is basically n lambda naught that is the refractive index is a function of uh, free space wavelength lambda naught okay so in that case you can consider omega equals 2 pi c over lambda naught okay and k is nothing but 2 pi n over lambda naught okay so k is basically the wave vector inside that particular dielectric medium of refractive index n okay now we can find out the group velocity but by first finding you need dou omega and dou k so this one so you take this equation omega equals 2 pi c by lambda naught and to get dou omega you differentiate it okay so that gives you minus 2 pi c over lambda naught square dou lambda naught fine and then you take k equals 2 pi n over lambda naught and there also you can do the differentiation you can write dou k equals okay so this is how you differentiate it so here this is also a function of lambda naught so that is why you have to do it in two parts and finally you can add up together i'm just not reading out these terms you can simply see this is a very simple calculation and finally you can write vg equals dou omega by dou k so dou omega you can bring this term and dou k you can bring this term and then when you make the common terms cancel out each other you will be left out with c over n minus lambda naught dou n over dou lambda naught that is lambda naught that is the free space wavelength times the the derivative the way the refractive index is changing with lambda naught so that term comes into picture so that is how you can write vg is nothing but c over ng capital ng that is the group index okay so group index belongs to a plane wave of certain frequencies okay traveling inside a particular dispersive media okay so you can write also what is ng that is the group index of this medium so this particular medium n has got a dependence of lambda for that you can find out what is the group index of that medium and it can be given as n minus lambda naught dn over d lambda naught okay so now let's look into the dispersion so in general for many materials the refractive index n and hence the group index ng that depend on the wavelength of light by virtue of epsilon r being frequency dependent okay so in those cases the group velocity and sorry the phase velocity and the group velocity both depend on wavelength and these are the kind of medium which is called dispersive medium where both phase velocity and group velocity is dependent on wavelength now if you consider a light traveling in a pure silica gas glass medium and if the wavelength of light is one micron and the refractive index at that wavelength is 1.450 micron then what will be the phase velocity group index and group velocity okay so you can actually look into the dispersion curve of uh, silica given here so here is the refractive index how it is varying with wavelength and also how the group index is varying with wavelength so you can find phase velocity using this formula v equals c by n that's very simple so v equals c by n c you already know n at uh, 1 micron is already given 1.450 you put it you get this value so that is the speed phase velocity now what is group index at lambda equal 1 so lambda equal 1 is uh, yeah this one so here you can see your ng is 1.463 
So once you know ng that is your group index you can find out group velocity vg that is c over ng. C you already know you put the value of ng you can find out what is the group velocity. So here if you compare these two you will see that the group velocity is roughly 0 0.9 times smaller than the phase velocity and that is usually the case. So this is the case of normal dispersion right. Now till now we have considered uh, like the plane wave propagation in either free space or perfect dielectric that is lossless dielectric. But you know in this case dielectric we have uh, essentially used it as a synonym for insulator. So we have been studying plane wave propagation through perfect insulators. But in reality there is no such thing called perfect insulator. So what effect will the conductivity of the material bring into the picture? That means if the dielectric is basically lossy. Now a lossy dielectric can be described as a medium where some fraction of the electromagnetic field power is basically lost when the wave is propagating. So that is how it is lossy. Now this power loss is basically due to poor conduction. A lossy dielectric offers uh, a partially conducting medium with a non-zero conductivity. So sigma becomes non-zero. The lossy dielectric can be represented by its conductivity, permeability and permittivity using this kind of values. So you can denote a lossy dielectric as sigma not equals 0 and then epsilon equals epsilon r epsilon not mu is nothing but mu r and mu naught. So once you do that you will have some changes in the wave equation. So the wave equation for electromagnetic propagation in lossless media we have seen this was the value del square e plus omega naught omega square f mu epsilon e equals 0 right you could have written this part as k square and we would have called this as Helmholtz equation so that is all fine. Now if you consider that for lossy medium j is nothing but sigma e so if you go back to Maxwell's fourth equation and you write curl of h then becomes j that is sigma e plus dot d dot e so d can be written as epsilon e and dot dot t can be written as g omega okay so that way you can write you take e common you can write sigma plus j omega epsilon okay so in the other cases we have seen sigma was zero in the lossless case okay but here you are actually having a finite value of this is a non-zero okay so let us denote this term as a complex permittivity so you are writing as epsilon c so it's nothing but j omega epsilon c e so you can actually define uh, this new constant epsilon c can be written as epsilon minus j omega sigma over omega so once you do that you can put it back in the form of uh, Helmholtz equation and this time the Helmholtz equation changes so only change will be del square e plus omega square mu this instead of this epsilon you will have this epsilon c okay and this term can also be written as minus gamma square e so let us see what is this gamma so this gamma is nothing but the propagation constant and it is defined as j k c so kc can be written as omega square root of omega by n okay or instead of that uh, you can write omega square root of um, mu epsilon c and gamma can also be written in two parts like alpha plus j beta where alpha is basically the attenuation constant and beta is basically the phase constant or the propagation constant okay so you can equate the real part to the real part and imaginary part to the imaginary part and find out what are this. So you can briefly say gamma is nothing but alpha plus j beta. So alpha is nothing but the attenuation constant which is a measure of the spatial rate of decay of the electromagnetic wave in the medium. Okay, That means the rate at which it is getting decayed. So it can be written in terms of 
neighbors per meter or you can also write in decibel per meter phase constant is basically a measure of the phase shift per length or you can also call it as phase constant or wave number so that we have already seen so once you understand this two property in in terms of mu epsilon and sigma you can represent alpha and beta in this particular form okay so they are very identical equation only this is minus and this is plus okay and what you have seen that from this you can also obtain what is the intrinsic impedance of the medium that is eta that is given by square root of j omega mu over sigma plus j omega epsilon now in the case of free space where conductivity is zero okay this turns out to be this term goes out j omega j omega goes out you simply have omega and no, this is mu naught over epsilon naught and eta naught that is the free space um, interesting impedance will be nothing but square root of mu naught over epsilon naught that is a standard value everybody knows it's 120 pi or 377 ohm okay so if you consider the material to have a permittivity so if the material is uh, absorbing we can say the material also has a complex permittivity okay similarly in terms of refractive index you can say that the material any absorbing material has got a um, complex refractive index n so n now will have two parts that is real part and imaginary part so n prime and n double prime okay and this is how they can be correlated so you can write what is uh, k k is plus minus omega n over c and n can be written as n prime plus i n double prime and then you can split them out in you know real and imaginary part and then equate this with beta minus i alpha by 2 okay so that way you can also find out so if you only investigate the um, wave vector or wave number with positive sign okay in that case you can write down the wave equation or the electric field expression like this so e z t okay will have uh, real e z omega exponential minus i beta z so that tells you about the traveling wave minus alpha by 2 over z so this terms tells you the decay constant with z okay so i think this this is z hmm. so and this is anyways this is correct because if the propagation direction is x the decay term here is also correct it is nothing but exponential okay uh, you can see this term beta is nothing but k n prime so a decay term is basically this one okay it is beta and alpha so beta is the traveling wave term so beta is omega over c n prime that is k n prime alpha is minus 2 omega by c n double prime so that is nothing but minus 2 k n double prime so from here you can also see this is alpha by 2 so 2 cancels out it is only minus k naught n double prime and x x is nothing but the propagation direction here we have considered x propagation direction though here we have taken the equation along z if it is along x you make it to x this will be x and this will also be x okay so that is fine so what i mean to say that here the wave will be propagating but then along with the propagation the amplitude will not remain same it will keep on decaying and this will be the rate of decay okay so with that we'll stop here and in the next lecture we'll discuss about uh, polarization optics and in case you have any query on this particular topic and any questions you can drop an email to this email address thank you mm -hmm.